So this is interesting. We are in an era where we can build anything we want. So all of these lovable .dev types of apps are popping up. Bolt.new, of course, lovable.dev, data button. I'm getting messages with all kinds of different ones. And I'm seeing people building, no doubt, some amazing things with a lot of these apps. So Stack Blitz, who own Bolt.new, they tend to repost. If you tag them, they'll repost your different projects, the things that you build. And you can see some amazing things being built. Some things are more hobbyist kind of things. Some people just have these creative ideas and they want to put them together, test out the tools, see what can be made. But then now the question is, how do we actually monetize? How are people going to monetize? Some things are, I'll say, I won't say better than others, but some things are more monetizable than others. Some people are, again, just building as hobbyists. But if we can all build these things, what are we doing to you know, better our lives? So we've built the thing or moreover, what could we build that we can actually profit from? We can actually make something amazing and make money from making. So there are a number of ways that we can actually make money from the, the things that we're doing, the things that we're creating. And also a lot of people are making SaaS tools, but they don't know how to market them. So making some amazing SaaS tools. What is this? This looks, this looks fun. Task pet. Making some amazing... I'm going to go and check that out after. That looks cool. Making amazing SaaS tools, but then marketing. What, what, what are they going to do to market it? Do they have the paid ads budget? Do they know the SEO? What are they going to do to market it? So we're going to have this influx of amazing tools, amazing things, but most people are not going to know how to monetize. So again, it made me think, let me do a video because I've been in the website world, the niche site world for a while. And that was the main thing of creating niche sites. We would target SEO queries, get the traffic and mostly monetize with ad revenue or products, digital services, those kind of things. So again, I thought I'd share some other monetization methods that might give you some inspiration for your web app. And side note, again, I've used all of these and I've got my preferences, but I'll share what my preferences are and why a bit later in the video. So number one for me is going to be the ad revenue model. This is the first one. I have a lot of experience with it, but when I first started building sites, I thought AdSense was the only ad network. It didn't pay much. So when I learned that I could make not just tens, but hundreds of thousands per month just by displaying passive ads on my site, I was sold. And while the long tail keyword SEO strategy for niche sites seems to be dying a slow death, advertising agencies are still running and many people are still wildly profitable with this model since refocusing their traffic sources. So as I said, AdSense is not the only advertising network and you can still earn good money with ads using premium ad works like the ones you can see on the screen. So Ezoic, Mediavine, Raptive, these are some of the major premium ad networks. And again, you're not limited to AdSense. So if you didn't know about those, definitely go and check them out. But the main thing is that you come up with a good strategy to get traffic to your site. So whether that's SEO, social or paid without traffic, this whole ad revenue monetization method isn't even a discussion worth having. So what most people do is they start by adding AdSense to their site because the barrier to entry is super low and then they staircase when their traffic starts to increase. So it will typically look like AdSense and then over to Ezoic and then over to Mediavine and then over to Raptive. Now, they each have different barriers to entry, such as the amount of monthly sessions your site is getting, and you cannot guarantee that your site will be accepted to the more premium networks. But it's entirely based on your RPM, 
which is how much the network is paying you per thousand visitors. So again, the name of the game is traffic. Number two is the paid subscription model. Now, we love the paid subscription model because it allows you to build the thing, set your price, and then work on converting more of your traffic to paid users. This model not only provides you with a monthly recurring revenue or MRR, but it offers a stable forecastable income stream. So you aren't selling a singular thing over and over again to a new person and having to find new customers. And thanks to these AI code gens, implementing tiered subscriptions is ridiculously simple. You can use Stripe integration, you can use PayPal, you can use Lemon Squeezy. There are a number of services and they all offer API integration for this reason. So if you previously didn't understand anything about API integration, and there was a developer tab. Now you can just copy and paste that documentation into your AI code gen of choice and it's going to handle all of that for you. Now, granted, there are things to consider like webhooks and getting that all set up properly and Superbase and all of that stuff. But the bottom line is it's so much easier to do and you can do it. To optimize this monetization method, you can do things like offering an annual subscription at a discount to secure longer commitments and more money up front. You can implement an automatic renewal process, of course, letting your customers know this up front and giving them the ability to cancel at any time with a renewal reminder before payment is being taken. And you can also use tiered pricing to capture different market segments. Number three is the freemium strategy. It's not always my favorite as a user, but depending on the feature, it's generally risk-free and gives you a way to come up with basic features or functionality and then gate those premium goodies behind a paywall. Now, if your product or service is good enough, they will want to become paid users. And if not, it is what it is. And I guess it will give you an opportunity to figure out what holes you have in your freemium model and ways you can improve your web app so they do want to stick around. The downside is that basic and premium functionality can be a bit tricky to implement, but you always have the option to just offer a free trial instead. So give full access to all the premium features for seven days, 14 days, 30 days, and then gate it if you don't take card details up front or automatically charge if you do. Simple. Number four is productized services and in-app purchases. I've found that offering both consumable and non-consumable purchases work really well. Think premium features, content upgrades, virtual goods, anything that adds value to your users. And in my experience, it works well in the fitness niche, education and also a niche productivity app so I think this is an underrated model but in the right niche it can be extremely effective if you come up with some quality and unique offerings so just to break it down a little bit more you've got consumable purchases these are one-time use items so these could be as simple as credits to use your tools or advanced features in your tools and then non-consumable purchases, and these are permanent upgrades or unlockables, like advanced analytics, additional storage, or even exclusive content. Number five is affiliate partnerships. Strategic affiliate partnerships are where it's at. And no, I'm not talking about random product promotion, although that is another method. This is you identifying and choosing partners whose products genuinely complement your site and reaching out to them to fire up a partnership. This works very well in the age of SaaS, where these mutually beneficial deals can explode both businesses and also where there's less overhead to go through. So possibly another indie hacker or smaller teams that have built a killer product. You collaborate with companies offering complementary tools, services or content that your users are likely already looking for. When your users make a purchase through your referral, you earn a commission. But there's a lot more potential here than just the typical affiliate linking. You've also got the benefit of built-in trust. 
when you're recommending something relevant and valuable, your users will trust you more. So it's not just random promotions. And then of course, because you're not the one responsible for product creation or customer support, and it's infinitely scalable, this can be a very high ROI type of deal. So those are my five key monetization methods. If you're building in these AI code gens, it's worth thinking about how you can monetize the thing you're building to make it really worth your time. And of course, you can use multiple, if not all of these monetization methods, if you do so strategically.